Bob Seal back with a new ADV semifinals game, and today we got Jirachi versus the real UD. Now Jirachi is on the Raiders and UD is on the Tyrants. So this is a nice semifinals match versus Zapdos versus Metagross lead. So Metagross nice and juicy. Could be either banded or mixed. Zapdos is probably gonna be some some like I don't know, <laughs> just some like some standard shit, you know, just T bolt, hidden power, Tom pass. Oh, uh, last move, nice, nice sub or something. I don't know. It's like some, it's like some standard zap those. Can't really go into that too much. Um, see Swampert come out, which is nice. We see also see a Blissey. No, not again. Okay, so once again the fat mods get blown away. I mean, this is semifinals. You got to bring your A game. You got to bring the fat boys. Cause otherwise you ain't winning. So we see a Swampert, which is a nice switch into the Metagross. I mean, if it was mixed, he still had to scout the next turn for HP Grass, but that's still fine. So Noise comes in on the um, Blissey, basically walling it because Noise is nice and juicy and fat. And especially if it is rest, it can wall it for the entirety of the game. So UD has a nice and fat team, but since he already revealed one steal, I don't think he has double steal. I don't think he has uh, Scar and Bliss. So it's nice to see what, what he would bring. It's no Scar and Bliss team, so I guess we're safe there. Because I don't think Jirachi would have a Magneton, so we're good. So we see a Celebi, also a nice and fat Mon, coming in on the Snow Eyes quite nicely. Um, the thing is, if it's Curse, I can still kind of set up on it, but there's Leech Sheet and everything. So I assume Celebi has Leech Sheet, and if it does, it can just fire off a free Leech Sheet here. It's the freest Leech Sheet of its life. We can't really, I, at least I can't really tell too much about the look of this team. But yeah, Leecher was kind of free body slam as well, doing a fair chunk. And nice getting that para, basically forcing the Celebi out. Because, like, if you're parried, you're basically dead. And, like, it gets, um, under, like, it gets outsped by the Snow right now as well. So I don't think you want to stay in. I think you want to switch in. Um, so I'm on in the back right here. So, yeah, Joshi doubles to zap those as just the recover comes out. Well, that, that's, I guess, fine. Uh, Drakkar was a fine play as well, just stalling Snorlax out of a bit of HP. It only does 6 damage with leftovers and leeches combined, but I mean, that's still a nice 6 if it doesn't have rest. So we see Zapdos on Drachi action. Blissey's just a safe switch in here on the. It, it basically walls Zapdos for infinity. So no sub or BP comes out because Snorlax is just free. So once again, we just see Fat Boys on Fat Boys action. This is nice ADV. I don't even know why I play and love this tier, but. <laughs> oh my lord, Fat Boys on Fat Boys action, but. I mean. If this isn't rest, this is gonna get chipped away super easily. And I mean, Body Slam does a lot, and you get another lucky pair. Nice Jirachi with that luck. You know the Raiders always lucky. But yeah, it doesn't really matter too much. I mean, it is obviously annoying for UD because like if even if he would go to Metagross to eat the Body Slam, then double back to Celebi, he just gives the Snorlax uh, recovery, and he can get parried here. So Shadow Ball comes out, doing a nice clean zero damage to Metagross, no drop as well. So. Yeah, Metagross can fuck this Snowax up with a boom. Um, I mean, Pert is kind of a safe play, I guess, but it could also be a, um, what is it? We see, okay, we see leftovers from the, okay, I had to check. <laughs> yeah, I, I have like a, like, <laughs> I don't know why I can see it, but it's leftovers, so that's probably mixed. So, yeah, go zap those as it's toxic, right? So toxic would have, yeah, toxic was a good play there because it hits both zap those and Pert, the two revealed mods that won't want to switch in on this. So that's super nasty, it's some toxic bullshit, which uh, does really make sense because there's two other fat boys in the back, so it's a fat team with some toxic action on this Metagross here. So I mean, this Metagross could be a threat if he just booms on something, because I assume it still has boom. I assume it's like toxic boom, EQ meter match, I don't know, that might be like some stupid set, I don't know. <laughs> but like, I mean, that sounds kind of logical to me. But he goes into Blissey here, so I mean... The thing is, he can just go right back to Snorlax. UD could double out in the Metagross if he's uh, real with the deal. The thing is, like, I don't think Jirachi would ever stay in here. Um, but if the Zapdos has BP, um, which I don't think it- No, it doesn't have BP, so it's gonna go hard Snorlax. It's a Wish comes out, okay. Yeah, that makes sense as well. So it's Wish Blissey. Again, Wish Blissey plus Magna- Meta- Magna- Magna Gross? I mean Metagross. It's a nice combination because you can keep my boy Metagross healthy. And he can just keep chilling right there, toxicing everything on the opposing side and- EQing the steel types that can't get poisoned. So, the thing is, this team gets fucked by um, Skarmory, so I assume there's a Magneton in the back, because I assume, yeah, it might be, it's like, hmm, unless these Pokemon have countermeasures for Skarm, or like, or it's Magneton, or it's some HP Fire Mons, Slash Flamethrower, but Ballista can't really fit it because he already has Wish. So, I mean, I guess he can, I guess he could fit it, but it's Estaz Wish, Soft Boiled, then filler move. I guess if that's flint, ah, it doesn't really work. I assume there's just a magneton in the back for sure. Um, so nice double steel core as well. Uh, another body slam para. So Jirachi, Runer's always lucky. You already know what the fuck going on. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So this, 
this boy, Snorlax, has been healing all the way up to full because of these leftovers. So if one of these one of these parties could introduce sand to the mix, that would uh, fuck Snorlax for sure. But I don't know. I don't know. But like, if Jirachi has the sand, uh, I mean, it's all right. It doesn't really come in on um, anything on Yuji's side that has been revealed right now. Because it can come in on Blissey instead of sand, but then it just takes the Estos to the face, and it doesn't really want to take that. Especially if it's special Titari, it just gets walled out and gets forced back out. And I don't think a fat team like UDs would have a Titar. Like, I don't know why it would have a Titar, to be completely honest. I mean, I guess the Pursuit Chap, but I don't know. There's a Metagross on Jirachi's, or Metagross Magnus on Jirachi's side as UD goes into Metagross, is what I was trying to say. So he catches him right there, but Magnus is still going to get popped by one EQ, so he can't really stay in. Because otherwise, Magna. <laughs> oh my lord. Otherwise, Metagross is gonna eat the hit from Magneton and wish back up with the Blissey later. So, Drachi's still forced out anyway. Uh, and Magneton does get revealed, so. T Bolt does do a chunk, but if it's EQ, this is. Okay. But now, huh? Okay, but now he can just wish Metagross back later. Like, he just gets a free wish on some things. What? Okay, well, that's a play I don't really understand because it doesn't really give you anything, but okay. Metagross is a huge problem when I see that, but. T Bolt didn't even do that much, to be honest, because it's a fat Metagross. Nice stall Metagross. So he catches him on that sweat double. He catches him with the double with a Snorlax. So Yudi gets forced back out, <laughs> back into Jirachi. Here we go. So he got some nice action right there. So Jirachi does have the Titar. And so uh, Wish comes out from Yudi, which was a good play, in my opinion, because you could wish and wish up your Metagross. This was, this was a good opportunity. But he goes Titar, which kind of covered the. Ah, it doesn't really in it like he tried to catch the Celebi at least so I assume it's some special pursuit set um, to catch the Celebi right there because he wanted it gone because if Celebi's gone um, none of the revealed mods really I mean okay Metagross kind of deals with um, Snorlax but it can get like chipped down and it can get parried because you know Jirachi's the luckiest the luckiest man alive with his body slam parries so he's gonna get parried eventually anyway but UD can't stay in but just just because if it is banded he can't stay in but I assume it is a special set because he tried to double it in on a Celebi. Because Celebi was nice and low. So we see Suicune as that is a... that's That doesn't do shit. Um, I don't know the head counts. Let me... let me. Um, actually, I wanted to pause it real quick, but that, there's no real point. Uh, that didn't do shit, so that's not banded for sure. But yeah, so I assume it's just some special set with some EQ on there. Just like, I don't know, something like that. Because that didn't do shit. Like, there's, th there's no way that's banded, obviously, but... I don't think that's invested as well because because <laughs> that doesn't do crap and it could be like max defense weakening which I think it is but even then that doesn't do jack shit so yeah so we can coming in right now on Jirachi's side I do not see a pump switch in like okay never mind I see a small accent right there but Snorlax doesn't even beat Suicune that comfortably because Suicune is nice nice I mean it kind of beats it at the HP it's it's at right now, but if he weakens the Snorlax, because Sand is now up, so no left use for Snorlax anymore. So if he keeps switching Snorlax in on the S tosses, it keeps getting chipped, and at the, eventually Suicune will be able to pull through. And Suicune actually molests Jirachi at the moment, so unless he has some hidden unreal tech mon in the back, which I assume it, he does, because his team actually kind of like there's a Zapdos and a Magneton, nice two electric types, but like they don't eat a hit. They don't like they don't like to catch hits from Suicune, so I assume Jirachi still has something in the back. Now for UBD's Pokemon in the back, I know there's a spinner for sure. Um, this is what I <laughs> this is what I saw last time. Like last time I kinda fucked up because there's a fat team and I didn't know what the last was, but it's obviously a spinner. So there's already a Suicune revealed. Uh, might be in might be uh, Yeah, I assume it's I assume it's a nice fat ground, like Claydol or Dawn Fan. But there uh, if he's if he's Claydol, that's triple psychic, so he might he might reveal goat Dawn Fan. So, yeah, Suicune could just go for either a CM or a water move. I think water move to chip away at Snorlax is nice. But maybe Jirachi has some hidden unrevealed Pokemon in the back. That is going to put in work. But Snorlax does come out here as it's Surf. Okay, yeah, that makes sense because you want to preserve PP because it is a fat team. Nice fat teams with nice 100 turn games. So you want to preserve that PP. Surf does jack shit, but Snorlax doesn't get any health back unless it rests up if it has that. And we see that it's kind of like, it's kind of a fat boy, right? So... It might have that nice rest to keep longevity in. But Drossy team isn't really that fat. And he also has a Magneton. I mean, yeah, it's not that fat. He also has a Magneton. So I don't know if it would be rest. Like, this is this is the thing with Snorlax. Like, Snorlax can run so much. <laughs> oh. oh my lord. That, that matters for sure. That sucks. Oh my lord. This man Jirachi pairing every single body slam. So if my is a bit 
bad um, with the small accent. Like, if the small accent's, like, super obvious, um, if, like, if I could check that button, the damage, because, like, I know ADV, but I don't know the head calyx, like, I don't, I'm no, I, I'm no Pokemon calculator human edition, so I can't really, can't really calculate that. Let me, let me actually open a calc to the side since they're not moving anyway. Ooh, let me get this tactical calculation in to see what kind of small axis is so I can give some better commentary for you guys. So, nice small hex. So, let's see. Versus a nice Celebi. So, we see that body slam does uh, some damage. Yeah, so either that is, um, either that is some offensive variant of Snorlax, or it is a, um, wait, yeah, either that's an offen offensive variant of Snorlax, or that is a Celebi with, like, no investment whatsoever in defense, and, like, not even good HP, as we can see from that, so, yeah, that's, that, that Snorlax definitely has some investment in attack, so, it's Curse Lax, I, no, it, it isn't Curse Lax, because otherwise he would have clicked it by, long by now, so I assume it's just some, a uh, few attacks set with boom, um, yeah, the just I think just just the boom set. I think it's just boom, EQ, body slam because Jirachi, as we can see, is super lucky with his body slam. That's thirty percent, but still gets it every single time. So that's why he's running that body slam. And the last move could be either fire blast, could be something like that. It could be uh, oh, it's already revealed shadow ball. I have fucking downs. It's already shadow ball revealed. So the last move is shadow ball, obviously, which which is nice for the Gengar. So. That is interesting, but because he already has that for he already has this Snorlax for the Gengar. Although this Gengar, oh, this Snorlax can get Hypnosis on, he can go Willow on, so it's not that good of a Gengar answer. Um, because like Snorlax is never that good of a Gengar answer. Because if it gets Willowed and there's Sand up, it just gets super chipped. So he goes into Metagross as the EQ comes out, predicting the Metagross is a clean 40. So yeah, it is it is offensive as fuck. So yeah, it is it is that set. As last move, Boom, which can claim a life on UD's side easily. So that's definitely a breakthrough Jirachi has, but then it loses his, then he loses his Snorlax, which suck, which would suck for the speaking. So goes into that those as a Boom comes out from Metagross. Kind of, I mean, yeah, kind of obvious, but what could Jirachi do? Like, <laughs> to be honest, so Zapdos and Metagross both have a nice double down. So that's kind of cool on UD's side that he has Metagross over something like Skarmory because Metagross is super cool because it can toxic opponents on the uh, yeah can toxic boys on, boys on the opposing side and then just boom to claim a life in the end. So Jordy Nelson the Aerodactyl gets revealed here. As um that does make sense nice double rock core um because he kind of needs a physical breaker although that is offensive yeah as offensive Snorlax so he switches in his uh, Magneton as we already talked about that that his last would probably be Magneton um yeah the last on UD is oh I mean not the this is not the last it's the second last the last on UD side is a spinner but at least I assume because there's like some fat boys and otherwise he's I mean there's a Magneton so it doesn't have to be a spinner I guess but ah uh, yeah Oh, we can see that uh, we don't see this thing healing, so it's Magnet Magneton. Okay, well, then it makes sense because Magnet Magneton can Oko Skarmory always. So I don't think the last one's a spinner then. But yeah, I, I assumed it would be Leftovers Magneton because this team is kind of fat and it kind of wants that. But yeah, it's Magnet Magneton, so it can Oko Skarmory in one hit. So it doesn't really need a spinner. So it's toxic, okay. But it's Lumberry. It's Lumberry Titar. Okay, we're good. We're good. Nice Lumberry Titar. So it's Lum I assume then. So it's kind of interesting that he doubled it in on a Celebi then, but maybe he didn't even try to catch the Celebi, I guess. But yeah, it is some form of DD. So DD, DD, Rock Slide, something. Rock Slide's the, this, but he t bowls into 10 fucking million, holy fuck, Magnet Magneton is strong. That is 10 billion, so this is a huge problem, because it's nice and Magnet boosted. The fact that he stayed in as well, like nice gold play, was actually a power maneuver, so that is a shitload. So. Jirachi is gonna get mauled by Suicune every single time it comes in, and Suicune, like, he, he can just sack Magneton, go Suicune, and, like, Jirachi is fucked. Like, Suicune is claiming lives, so I don't really see how Jirachi is winning this. He needs to, like, rock light flinch his way through with Arrow and Titar. I think that might be his win con, to be honest. Or catch UD on the choke with Boom Lax. I think that might be one of his only two win cons. I don't think this kills, unless I got my calc wrong. But, I don't think this kills, and Jirachi can boom. This is, this, this is the problem here. If Jirachi booms, and UD switches out into a Pokemon he doesn't need, then Squeakum claims the other three is lives, and then it's just over. So, this is super hard for Jirachi. And if he body slams on Paris like a lucky dog, <laughs> then, then we're all good. But, yeah, this is, this is a really hard turn. Kind of for both, to be honest. 
Because if UD gets his play right with the pump, if he pumps on a, like, for example, body slam, and he doesn't get parried, and he hits his pump, and there's no boom, or I mean, pump, what, what the fuck, pump? What am I saying? There's surf revealed, so yeah. Uh, nice down seal coming into play. I don't know why I kept saying pump, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I'm kind of used to seeing pump as we can, but it's, it's obviously surf. So if he uh, surfs and the body slam comes out, he doesn't get parried, he molests. Like, he basically molests. So... Let's see how much this should do. Oh, this doesn't do shit if it's, uh... Yeah, this doesn't do shit if it's not invested. As it's sub Suicune. Oh, ho, ho, goat. So, it's sub Suicune, which is, um, really, really cool. That's a, that's a power set. So, he subs on the boom as Lax goes down and Suicune is still alive. And he didn't even lose a... Oh, my lord, yeah. This is over. <laughs> this is over as fuck. This Suicune is gonna claim three other lives. It's at plus one. Swampert is gonna take ten billion from Surf. Um, now what I wonder is, that Suicune, if that Suicune is like max fit F, then it's super cool because then, um, if you're sub fit F Suicune, and your EV to live body slams from Lax, you can sub up on Lax and body slam doesn't break, and then you can just get free setup on it and can't even boom on you. That's a super cool set, so I don't think it's invested into attack. I think it's a bold set, because that's like super cool. That's a really sick set. I've actually never seen that. Like, I've seen it- I've, I, I don't- I don't think I've never seen it. Like, I've seen subs Suicune before, but it's not that common. And it's definitely really cool that you would bring that. Because, like, Snowlax is- Snowlax is kind of a problem on every single- like, in every single game. Snowlax stay broken in GSC and ADV, so... This is definitely interesting. So... I mean... Okay, the thing is... This, this doesn't even do that much to Pert, depending on its EV spread, but it shouldn't do that much to Swampert, although it is plus one, because I don't think Suicune it would be invested if it is Substitute, so... Yeah, it doesn't even do that much, I, I just calculated, and it does like around 40 if it's some, if it's on some standard fit F Swampert, so... It does 50, okay, so <laughs> that's that's definitely invested a bit. But, yeah, it does 50, so that does it, that kind of does a lot, and EQ doesn't even do that much back. Uh, this, is, this doesn't tweak you, though. And the thing is, if he EQs, if he, okay, so if he just goes for the kill here, he takes one more EQ to the face, and then he might be prone to getting flinched down by Aerodactyl. I know it's kind of, yeah, I, I definitely agree with UD's play here, because otherwise he might have gotten prone to getting flinched down by Aerodactyl. I mean, now he still is because of Suicune, but yeah, I don't know, it doesn't, it, what, I'm, what I'm saying doesn't really make sense because Aerodactyl can still flinch Suicune, but it's at least one less thing he has to flinch. So he goes into Suicune, gets a Suicune healthy, this is over. This is over as fuck. So he just hits Surf and claims one here, so, yeah. Um, so, Rockslide comes out, does a fair- oh, okay, so <laughs> that really sucks for UD, so there goes his 100% win. So he's just gonna Surf up here and- Okay, so, remember when I said flinching was a win con, I didn't really mean it. I was like, it was kind of a joke, but Jirachi was like, nah bro, I'm- <sighs> I'm like- this, this, oh my lord, the Raiders have been lucking so hard this series. I've been watching some of these games and the Raiders have been lucking so hard. So he goes into this, predicting the EQ. Go, oh, GOAT! UD, GOAT! So he eats this hit. He eats this hit. Oh my lord, UD's the best to ever do it. Kingpin. Kingpin. Absolute, absolute unit. So, he eats this. He eats this. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> what the fuck? Not even a miss. No, 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 no. What? Oh, thank God. Oh, fuck. Okay, okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay, okay. Good. He can still win. I, I know he can't. Aerodactyl wins. I'm lying. Aerodactyl wins. Because Bliss can eat, but then Aerodactyl just. Won. I don't think I've. I don't think I've seen anything this stupid, in, in any in ADV ever. Yeah, UD saying nobody likes to complain if it's hardly felt fair. Yeah, Jirachi hacks into shit. Like, this game, if he didn't get, like, if he got the, like, the first flinch, I guess there's, like, there's a 30% chance you can, I guess, that's, it still hacks, but it's not really that, that huge hacks. Like, it's 30%, you can kind of get it. And if he didn't get that flinch, it was 100% over UD, just one with Suicune. And then the second flinch, um, obviously sucked as well, because that cost him his Salamence. And then he got the third flinch, which actually cost him his Salamence. So, can we get another flinch for the boys? Okay, no other flinch. And he gets a crit, okay, that's nice, that's nice to see. That is nice to see, but I'm shook.
Yeah, Aerodactyl just wins here. It's over. I think. Oh, well, well, well. Listen, sweet. Hold up. Hold the fuck up. How? How? Oh no, Suicune was at like 20%. Fuck, I thought Suicune was at like 40. No. Oh my lord, no. I forgot to Suicune was at 20. Oh, it's not even at 20. It's at 10. Yeah, it doesn't eat, obviously. Fuck, I thought it was at 40. Yeah, this was a dog shit game. This was complete ass. <laughs> Holy fuck. Sorry for the BS. GG. That's an offensive GG right there. Yeah. So... I mean, I don't think, does he still show the, I think Dox is going to show the record, but that kind of doesn't matter. I'm going to pause this video and bring up the actual thing here. Smong our Premier League. Drag it into my screen. Yeah, Smong our Premier League, nice. So we see that, um, that, I kind of fucked up here, but we see Dragonsboro Tyrants versus Team Raiders is 6-6 six, six at the end, and there's going to be a tiebreak here. Uh, no ADV in the tiebreak, so we don't see a rematch. Uh, it's DPP, UU, and OU, so my man LL might record this DPP, which would be nice for the channel. Then we got UU and OU, so another Zomok match, so you'll, you'll be looking forward to that. Zomok is the GOAT, so then we see on Wolfpack versus Runers, we see that um, we see that it's also a tie, so this is kind of cool. It's a double tie in semis, and ooh, this is what I like to see. We see an ADV game in tie break, so you will be looking forward to that, because I will definitely be recording that. Plus, I'll be recording the finals game in... Um, ADB as well, so two more two more SPL games this week. So ABR versus Cedema is also a fire matchup. A Solon versus Wii Three Kings. I don't know BW, it's a garbage tier, but it's still fire. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that juicy like and. Uh <laughs>